Hello, in this lesson we are going to look at absolute cell addresses or absolute cell references. So I've got the two functions or the two formulas even that we wrote in the previous lesson. And what I want to look at here is I've now added a few more dates. So I have a proper list, a very small one. You can imagine this is a lot bigger maybe, but I have a list nonetheless. And if I just quickly remind us, this is the formula that we wrote in B2 in a previous lesson. And what I'm going to do is just copy that formula down for the other dates, the other rows in my list. And that formula will work perfectly for every other cell, or every other like row, record, uh, whatever you want to call it. And that's because it uses relative references. Well, one side of it is a relative reference. The other side of it is a function, meaning that that reference is cell A2, the cell to its left, and when I copy the formula down, the cell that I reference will move as well. So in the cell below, that one's using A3, which is now the cell to its left, and the one below uses A4, which is now the cell to its left, and that's known as a relative reference, because it's looking at the cell in relation to itself, like the cell to the left, rather than A4, which is what it displays. But basically, when we copy the, the formula, the cells we reference move with us. They stay in relation to us. And that's fantastic in that example. Now, over here, with our network days, this is going to create a problem. Uh, so let me see that, and then we'll talk about it. So I'll copy the formula down as well, and it gives me an answer. So it maybe initially looks OK. But I can see with these three, and only these three, Excel is not giving us an error, but it's querying what we've done. It's looking at it thinking, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Are, are you sure? Have you done that right? And if I maybe look at this little warning that they're giving me, I can see it's telling me on screen now that the formula I've written refers to a range that has additional numbers next to it. And more importantly, if I look at this formula, I can see it's using, as its arguments, the today function. Yes, yeah, brilliant, I want that. A5, yes, yeah, brilliant, I want that. That's the cell moving down when I copy the formula, just like we spoke about a minute ago. But then I have this. Now, that's the non-working day sheet. That's great. But it's looking at A5 to A7. And you may remember the range I need is A2 to A4. But because of now... By this point, I've copied down three more cells. So it doesn't say A2, it says A5. It doesn't say A4, it says A7. So every cell I've referred to has also moved down every cell that I have. That's good news for the A5 side of things, the column A side of things. It's not good news for these. Those non-working days that are sitting on the other sheet over here, I don't want them moving. Every time I copy the formula down, that range I've got highlighted, A2 to A4, will move from A3 to A5, to A4 to A6, to A5 to A7, and so on and so forth, slowly moving away from the dates. I don't want them to. I need to fix them or lock them, which a lot of people call this. The official term is I need to make them absolute. That is the official term. Not that that is massively important to know. Most people are trained, most people I speak to call this fixed referencing. So we should probably call it that. <laughs> um, okay, to do this, let me double click on that first cell with a formula in. I'm going to just highlight that part of my formula, the A2 to A4. Now I don't have to highlight it all. I could just click among part of the range and do them bit by bit. But the thing I'm looking at doing is on my keyboard, I'm going to press the F4 key, the function key F4. And one press on that will put these dollar signs in that address. Uh, you could have just typed them in yourself. You don't have to use the F4 key. But the dollar sign before the A is fixing column A. So if I copy to the right, which I'm not, that would stop it moving into B, C, D. Dollar before the 2 is important because I am copying down across the rows and that stops it going to 3, 4, 5 
And then the same the other side, fixing column A, fixing row 4. So it could be argued, really, in this example, that I don't really need the dollar signs before the A. Now, I don't want to overcomplicate things here, but it is only the rows that are actually causing me an issue, because I know I'm copying vertically, like down, and it's the rows that are moving. The column's not doing anything wrong anyway. So I could just fix the rows and that would be okay. And you may see people do that sort of behavior. Uh, I am going to fix them both. Might as well uh, keep things simple, not think too much. Let's just say absolute reference, fix them up. And I press enter and nothing really changes. But then I click on that cell, make a note that that answers 82, the one below. I copy it down and it redoes the calculations. Notice it's now 81. So that formula there in the previous one had shifted. It had gone from, whoops, making a mistake here. It had gone from that range to that range and missed out that first date. But now it doesn't, so it gives me the right answer. No more warnings. And when I look at any other formula, that bit is still moving. That's gone from A2 to A3 to A4 to A5. That one is not going anywhere. It is fixed. It is locked. It is absolute. And that is absolute addressing. It's done by using a dollar sign. Dollar sign is before the thing it's fixing, that column or row, or the F4 key, the function key F4, is a little shortcut for putting them in as you write your formulas. Just to kind of speed you up when you know you need it there and then, one tap of a button and it's done.